Today we're going to talk about threats to biodiversity. So first, what's biodiversity? The sum of all living species in the biosphere. Okay, so think about all the different kinds of living things that live in an ecosystem. The more diversity you have, the more healthy that ecosystem is, re is rated usually. So if scientists are measuring the health of an ecosystem, oftentimes they're going to measure the biodiversity. The more diverse, the more healthy the ecosystem is considered to be. Because again, if maybe the environment changes or um, something happens, the more diverse it is, the better chance there is for survival of the species. Um, so now think about what are some things that threaten the biodiversity. Um, so we watched a video when we started the unit with the poisoned waters. What were some of the things that uh, would decrease the biodiversity? So here's our list. Human, human, humans. Okay, uh, we're doing most of it ourselves. So um, habitat destruction is the number one threat to biodiversity. Just cutting down the homes where, especially the rainforest. Um, hunting and poaching. Just saw another article, uh, I was listening to the radio and they had another um, episode about how the elephants are just going to be extinct in certain parts of Africa because of the poaching. Introducing toxins into the habitats, um, so lots of, you know, whatever it's fertilizers or other mercury, other things leaking into the habitats. Pollution causes acid rain, the greenhouse effect. And then um, last but not least here we have introducing foreign species into new environments, so we'll talk about that. Okay, so what is the greenhouse effect? Okay, basically what the greenhouse effect is, is that the sun heats the earth, okay, and normally the, the heat bounces back out and leaves. Okay, but now we've built up this layer, so with the burning of the fossil fuels, so remember from the carbon cycle, when we burn fossil fuels, that's gonna put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that's going to create this layer around the earth which instead of letting the heat bounce out the heat bounces back in and it gets trapped inside the earth and so then we have global warming right so global warming is caused by the greenhouse effect or one of the causes is the greenhouse effect where we're trapping the heat inside the earth because of the carbon dioxide gases that are being released through the burning of the fossil fuels Okay. Other things, um, acid rain. Okay. So pollution combines with the water in the air. So when you see the smokestacks and our cars, when we burn the fuel, it's releasing pollution into the air. And then the pollution combines with the water when it rains and it becomes acidic. So you do need to know the pH scale. Remember, 7 is neutral. Okay, and then acids are below 7. So acid rain is between 4.2 and 4.4. Okay, so notice what's going to happen. All fish are going to die at 4.2. Okay, so if it rains enough, you know, and it changed the acidity of the entire pond, then all the fish in that pond could die. But other things like maybe it's just going to kill the eggs or maybe it's going to kill certain species of fish. So again, the acid rain changes the pH of a lot of the ecosystems and then the organisms can't survive there. So another um, idea here is called biological magnification is that when you put pollution or toxins into an ecosystem usually they're they're actually teeny tiny amounts so you only put teeny tiny amounts of this pollutant into the ecosystem but what happens is is first the um, the phytoplankton will take that in right and so the algae and the phytoplankton take in that toxin just tiny little teeny tiny bits of it so they're swimming in the water and they're um, they're taking in the toxin and then let's say the zooplankton eats 
the phytoplankton and so but it eats a lot of phytoplankton so you accumulate amounts of that toxin inside the zooplankton and then when the fish eats the zooplankton it's going to eat a ton of zooplankton and so it's going to accumulate more and then when the big fish fish eat the little fish again and when if we eat the big fish then the the um the toxin builds up as you go through the food chain so that's called biological magnification And last but not least, we have invasive species. Invasive species are species brought to a habitat where they're not normally found. Um, one of the problems is they either have no natural predator um, or they're really good at growing fast. So typically they're growing exponentially, um, which is the fast type of growth. Um, and often the problem is, is that they crowd out the native species. So they grow so fast and nothing sort of controls their growth so that they um, take over the ecosystem. Okay, some things lately, right, we've all seen maybe seen the stink bugs. Um, those are invasive from China. The emerald ash borer, so that's gonna um, basically eat into the trees and hurt those organisms. Fire ants in, mostly in the southern part of the United States have been a big problem. Other things, there's the zebra mussel. Um, so basically these mussels got into aquatic ecosystems and they crowded out all these other species. Um, and then most of the invasive species we actually see are plants. And what happens with the plant species is that they just grow and they crowd out all the other species. And so then the native species um, that are food and habitat for lots of animals get crowded out by these um, non-native species. So sometimes they're called invasive species, sometimes they're called non-native species. And all of those things are threats to biodiversity because either they're crowding out and killing the natural species that live in that habitat and uh, so big problems for us to deal with. That's it.